Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. We're live in San Francisco at the Red Hat Summit. And we're talking about what's going on in open source, cloud, operating systems, OpenStack, you name it, we're on it. This is an amazing event. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. I'm joined by my co-host, Stu Miniman at wikibon.org. And our next guest is Sam Greenblatt, VP of Architecture and Technology and CTO of Dell. Uh, welcome back to the Cube, your Cube alumni. Uh, previously with HP, now with Dell. Welcome back. Oh, thank you very much. Um, we were talking prior to we went on about uh, just the innovations around you know, operating systems and systems, and now we're in a whole nother era of essentially open source really setting the foundation as a tier one resource for enabling huge innovations, and we're living in a massive inflection point. Some call it a bubble on the consumer side, uh, but really it's a recast of a whole new architecture. So I want to get your take on a couple things uh, about what's going on in Red Hat. Um, you guys announced um, a significant announcement with cloud and OpenStack, and, and talk about your announcement and what that means for this continuum of computing, the computing industry going from data center centric now to a cloud, and what does your announcement mean? It, what our announcement meant today was we are working very closely with Red Hat on a couple of things. Uh, cloud stack's very important, but we don't see it as a cloud. We see it as an infrastructure, as a service, so much that when you buy RHEL 7 or 6.5, you get, if you order it, uh, the OpenStack can uh, source code, and not source code, but the binaries. What's important about it is we've done OpenStack for a long time, and everybody who does it looks at us and says, okay, we got it up and running, what do we do next? And that's always the classic question. And what's happened is applications have to keep up and make the cloud a cloud-centric uh, basic uh, platform. And so therefore, we believe that OpenShift is a great PaaS layer. We also uh, do Cloud Foundry, but uh, OpenShift is where we're putting effort or would behind the arrow with Red Hat. We're also working on containers, and uh, I saw you had Docker on, and uh, Solomon's a character, but what we like about Docker is it gives true portability to anybody who has a Linux platform, and I'm sure he talked about he's going to do Windows in the future, so that makes pure... No, I think uh, that's a scoop here. We got that. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll make that right that Hopefully down. Hopefully that's not a scoop. So. <laughs> no, he uh, didn't talk about that, though, but he did go into detail on some of the container benefits. Well, if you noticed, Red Hat bought a small company out of Seattle that does uh, container uh, windows. So uh, if, with the partnership, you might see, see that. So. Okay, so let's get into the news. So, the, so Dell and Red Hat announced a private cloud solution. Just reading here my notes. Um, notable bullet points are co-engineering uh, with OpenShift and Linux containers. Uh, it's available uh, for RHEL and OpenStack. So it's, it's an enterprise pathway. So the, you know, the cloud has, is a nice bridge, and all the customers I talk to that have Red Hat always say, hey, I got Red Hat, I got some NetApp drives, I got some EMC drives, I got uh, this company servicing it. Uh, it's not going anywhere, but I want, some, I, want some, I want some cloud. But I want to look under the hood. Okay. And so they go, great. So OpenStack has been that great hope. It's a bridge to, for them to continue out their mission. So take me through your perspective of that customer, CIO, major financial institution, well, or, or vertical. Where, where, where do they get going? Well, we're working with a couple major customers on this. You got to remember that the abstraction is really being done by Red Hat Linux. So they is able to get the drivers, get the code, get it up and running. What OpenStack does is it uses the Linux, uh, more or less the HAL layer, the hardware abstraction layer, and to OpenStack, it doesn't know what's under it. Linux knows what's under it. So if you go up the stack, you got RHEL, then you have uh, Rev, which is the, the virtualization, and then you have OpenStack. Uh, so what most customers are doing right now is we're working on a lot of things, especially with Red Hat and RHEL, of making it able to 
span, if you will, multiple servers, multiple server forms, whether it's blades, racks, or even systems on a chip, we don't really care as long as we can pick up the configuration and go across it. So when we talk to Michael Dell, and we were always enamored by Dell's engineering capabilities, and they do move fast. Um, so talk about the co-engineering piece with, with, um, with Red Hat and OpenShift. What specifically are you guys co-engineering? What part of that uh, is from Dell? Where is Red Hat? Where's the handshaking going on? Well, the, let me go down the whole list, and then I can tell you. The first <laughs> There's one- There's a list on- <laughs> The first one we're doing is we're working in storage. Uh, I go up once a quarter to see the biggest banks in uh, New York. They want to have an open source object store. They think Swift is great. They think Ceph is good. They don't feel that they can scale. So we're working with Gluster and with our equal logic which you know very well and compelling. And our engineers are working on how do we take those, uh, those basically arrays and scale out and scale up uh, technology and map it into an object store as well as doing block. So Cinder and Swift are important. We think Ceph's important. We think Cluster's going to help us piece a lot of the things that the OpenStack community really hasn't touched. The second thing we did is, as you know, we announced Dell Open Networking. We put Cumulus on top of our Dell switch. No one else has done it. Uh, and there will be others in the future. And we are building out a complete, a complete solution with Open Daylight. We looked at other projects and like Open Contrail that Juniper put out there, but we are at the point that we believe that it has to be a software overlay. It can't be point to point. We've already proven it can't scale. So we're working very closely with their engineers in that framework. The third thing we're working on is basically management. We want to be, and I showed it on stage today, we want to be able to provision very quickly. Open stacks are bare to put in, unless you have tools. And we want to provide those tools. We started out with Crowbar. That went, served us very well. We're now working with Puppet and ASM. We have a great user interface on it. And we think that'll be great. I can keep going. So on the tooling side, are you, are you feeling good that the tooling's there, and is it, is, is it open source, or is it binaries that you guys are contributing? Well, what we're contributing is the reference architectures, the uh, templates that define how to do it, and we're also putting in a rules engine so that it can work in any environment. But the rules engine is rules, which is open source, and of course the uh, the code itself is Puppet underneath that does the discovery. And we've taken on with uh, Puppet Razor, uh, which was originally an EMC project, and we're using Razor to more or less uh, be able to do configuration. So, so Sam, you've listed off a, a ton of open source projects that you guys are embracing. Uh, you know, we're, we're well familiar. We actually had Cumulus on when you guys made the announcement uh, about the open networking. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, contribution from a coding standpoint? As uh, you, you mentioned Open Daylight, the uh, technical lead for Open Daylight said that, you know, code is coin of the land. So, uh, you know, how many, how many engineers, how, how, much, uh, how much resources does Dell, uh, you know, put into the game of open source? We, we are right now in a, brown, a bronze uh, level uh, for Open Daylight. We put a lot of skin in the game uh, everything we're doing with Puppet goes back into uh, the uh, Puppet Forge, and I hate that name because it reminds me of Source Forge. Sorry, Larry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Puppet Forge, and we donate all that back. So we want our devices to be as discoverable as anybody else's. We've written modules that handle Equalogic. We've written modules that help handle compellent. Uh, in the networking, we've already put back some code 
We have apt active fabric manager, which goes in, finds all the uh, connections. Uh, in compute, we're still putting modules in to optimize uh, Nova or compute. So we're pretty active. Uh, but what we want is in the co-engineering, we want those contributions in the future to come from our partner that's going to be the enterprise version, which will be Red Hat. So I got a question from the uh, Twitter sphere around uh, your thoughts around EMC's Viper product. <laughs> um, so, what, um, <laughs> I mean, different approach. I mean, can we, you comment on that, or is that yeah, it? <laughs> no? I, I can comment on it. Software Viper is an attempt by EMC to bring together six disparate product lines into a software-defined storage. We think it's a great approach. We think it'll help customers. But we believe that how you should do it is the way we're doing it with Equal Logic and Compellent. We're merging this st stack into what we call next gen. That's obviously, there's hundreds of next gens. And we're going to keep alive both products, but working on a single stack. Viper is an abstraction layer above it. And what we find with the abstraction layers, uh, when you're dealing with storage, you got to really build a software hypervisor that's able to work with the, uh, with the hardware much more efficiently. So um, in terms of approaches, you think that's orthogonal to the direction of like an OpenStack, or is it just more of their version of the truth, if you will? I don't think it's orthogonal. I think I wish EMC and uh, that team ver well in putting together a overlay to uh, try to bring their storage together. But I think uh, it's really, you're going to find that our solutions as they come out, and Alan Atkinson, who runs our storage, will kill me if I make any announcements like I did for Puppet. Uh, what will happen is I think you'll see us taking a different approach, but a more effective approach. What's your take on the clouds? When we talk to uh, uh, folks who are across spectrum of convergent infrastructure, who, who, ha who are dabbling in with past layer, and ultimately have customers that have the requirement for analytics, mobile, being your own device, the application-centric DevOps world. There's some systems challenges going on around oh. the cloud. So I want to get your take on that, because as CTO and someone who's been in the industry um, through many innovation cycles, um, booms and busts, and, and it, it does move in waves, we are now in a major innovation cycle. There is some new changes going on that's going to create some enabling opportunities. So, the enabling platform of cloud is presenting opportunities. So the question is, I want to get your perspective, and where is the stack baked and where is it not baked? Where are the white spaces? What are your, your thoughts on that? I'll give you one on big data. Uh, I have a meeting after now with another Hadoop vendor. Our biggest concern is Hadoop has its own file system. Anytime you have a separate file system for big data, that spells somewhat tr some trouble. What we're trying to work with all the vendors is in one common file system so that if you have block, object, or even a Hadoop, they can all live together. Where I think this, when you talk converged, we used to talk hardware. We're now, then we started talking about software. A converged cloud is a cloud that has IaaS, infrastructure as a service, PaaS, Platform as a service, MBS, which is mobile backend as a service, and SaaS. And it even goes above that, that uh, then you have containers. It's coming together. Is it there today? I think you can start building it, but it does take some elbow grease. Okay, so let's take your question about OpenStack. People can spin, stand up OpenStack. What are they doing with it is the question. What are they doing with it? So uh, I, I want to put the question to you because I think that's the next conversation we'll hear at OpenStack Summit in Atlanta. Is, Which okay, I get to keynote again. 
we'll, and we'll be there with the queue. We want to have you on again. Uh, you're on the keynote circuit. I don't uh, want to be on the keynote know. circuit. I'd like to be home with my wife, to be honest with you. You can come home, co-host the queue, get the keynote. Um, Stu, you're out. No, seriously, on what is that next level of innovation? I mean, because that's the real meat on the bone. The next level, first of all, when you get up OpenStack, everybody thinks it's going to be like VMware. And they're going to just put the applications into KVM, and it's going to perform the same way. And it's and it's the same with people coming from Hyper-V. And what we see it is almost like when you converge. Convergence is not going to happen in one stack. It's going to happen across stacks. Uh, and you got to do it through. We want to make paths convergent across both stacks. We want PaaS to be, we want Cloud Foundry, which is a pivotal project and uh, Paul Moritz is there. We want them and OpenShift to look very, very similar. So what we think the big challenge for us right now is not fracture the PaaS layer, like people are trying to fracture, tried to fracture Linux, Paul always reminds me of the Linux Wars 15 years ago. Paul was in it. I was a young baby at that time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was in diapers. If that <laughs> so uh, we want to get the industry to put the customer first, and that's everything we do at Dell, and stop the fracture, fracturing of the PaaS layer. We don't want to see SAS fractured and one of the things we're working with is to make sure and I, that we're able to get the containers. We think the containers are gonna be the next big technology. And one of the things that we do believe is with Ramesh, uh, I'm trying to wake him up, uh, working with us, uh, we're gonna create a more comprehensive uh, a solution. So, so Sam, I mean, it's obvious you're excited, and most of the people at this conference are pretty excited about containers. Uh, and you know, I, I think back to the early days of server virtualization, and it took a few years for people to really kind of grok, you know, why this was going to be so transformational. I, I love to I, use the word grok. Yeah. So I was actually, you know, working for the company that acquired VMware when that happened. And to be honest, I don't think everybody understood what they were buying, even though vMotion was there at the time, and we knew that this was some amazing magical stuff out there. What is it about containers that gets you so excited? Explain to our audience, you know, why this can be the next big thing. The difference between the early days when Diane sold it to that old company, uh, what containers do for you is it gives you portability. Portability is what we've always promised. But having CentOS or an operating system, I'm not sure what Red Hat is called, the next generation that goes into the containers. Uh, what's important is that you can take that app and put it on any Linux-based uh, system. Uh, matter of fact, you know last week Docker announced with AWS. We think that's great. You know, you look at Docker, it's, uh, and I'm not pushing them, they went from about 25 people in the open source community to over 500 today on a Git. But we think containers are going to be the next form of virtualization. Will it replace it? Absolutely not. You're not gonna see SAP virtualized into a container. But what you will see is applications that you wanna put onto a PC, onto a mobile device, uh, into the next Internet of Things, which I don't even want to touch right now because that'll be another five-hour conversation. So <laughs> and we got we, three minutes, so we, it's like, <laughs> we think it's great. Right, so let's go talk on the containers. So DevOps really is the culture now, and and you talk about this container and what we what we see is 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 this new breed of application developers are coming in, and they're whether they're young, new school, or old school that are coding faster, agile, whatever you want to call it. Um, are looking at as a systems approach without being systems programmers. So I think what's interesting about containers that has our attention, I want to get your perspective on this, the DevOps uh, ethos has been, I want to program software and have my infrastructure um, 
self-heal, self-form, be self-provision, basically have, take care of itself. So that's kind of the modern application developer. That's essentially moving up the stack. Do you agree and is that kind oh, of where? Oh, absolutely. You know, if you remember years ago, everybody talked about Mapper when it was on Unisys, creating an application quickly and not worrying about the infrastructure. If you really look at, and I hate to use an old example, but what's happened is it's really starting to happen with containers. I don't want the app, application developer worrying about anything but the business logic. And the data should present itself to the container and actually whatever comes down on should be able to be uh, almost like a pipe into that platform to get the data. So I got to ask you the question, the old days always about abstracting away complexities and that's the beautiful thing about uh, software and innovation is that the line of abstraction, what you abstract away from either coders and or other things becomes interesting because now if you don't have to deal with it, it's like what Intel processors were about. You know, hey, there's a lot of complex stuff going on but no one ever sees it because it just works. Where is that line moving from an abstraction standpoint if you have an open source community, you have an OS, you have distributed computing. I mean, these are systems <laughs> concepts as we were, as we, again, back to the systems conversation. So with all this going on, this global mainframe, if you want to call it that, or whatever you want to call it, where is the abstraction line of where you can harden a functionality? The abstraction layer should be at the application. And as you heard me open, the cloud, uh, the cl application is the center of the cloud. A classic example, when uh, you get a message on your cell phone, do you know what tower sent it to you? Do you care? Uh, do it you, works. Do you know what vendor actually provided it? That's what the application is abstraction should do. Abstraction creates a better chance for Dell because the more abstraction you have, the more the architecture of the hardware has to change to make sure we can create. Okay, so in your in your profession in your professional opinion, if you believe that, if people can can believe that, then that will create massive disruption from the old way, best in breed, you know, all those ways you used to compete. How does that, in your opinion, change the landscape? Because it does disrupt. It's a disruptive paradigm. You're essentially, you're essentially horizontally scaling. Right. At the same time, you're constructing and building more. So, <laughs> we, we've what's your been, take on that? We've been talking a long time about disruption. Disruption's only disrupting if you're the guy being disrupted. The other guy's the innovator. And what we see is People have to embrace a whole new way of doing applications. And when that happens, I think we're, gonna, we're all going to benefit. So the disruptors are the innovators. Essentially, people have to really figure out, are you being disrupted or not, right? So, <laughs> so Dell's an incumbent. If you want to look at, quote, if you want to classify Dell, and you're basically incumbent, you have a computer supplier, a computer systems vendor. You have software now. Michael Dell took it private, which is great. We're a big fan of that move. Um, how do you guys maintain that culture of being a disruptor and not being disruptive? Because you have territory. You have, you know, you're on, you know, big market share. And we have a big market share in the server industry. As you know, we're probably one of the leaders in web tech in in the industry. That was a disrupt, disruptive move about five years ago. Today, a lot of people are trying to get into web tech. What happens is how you do it is you start to look at the architecture. And I always get in trouble for saying this, the von Neumann architecture, which most computers are based on, and our friends down the, the uh, highway are involved, is going to change to more of a parallel compute architecture. When that happens, Dell will have the hardware and the software to meet those needs. Software's at the center of the universe. Uh, final, I'll give you the final word in this segment. What, tell the folks out there, what is this event all about here at Red Hat? So at this point in time, obviously a 10 year anniversary, that aside, you know, nice fanfare, you know, confetti coming from the sky. But from an industry, from a, from a disruption and, and an innovation perspective, what is so important about this show this week? What's important about this show is we're taking the key open source components and Red Hat 
and Dell and everybody else is looking for someone to enter, make it enterprise grade. Because if it's not enterprise grade, the banks, the major companies around the world aren't going to use it. So what's major about it is all the people can give the feedback to the leaders of Red Hat, the leaders of Dell, the leaders of OpenStack as to where the future should go. And there's no better place to do it than here. I'll just tell you one funny story. I was at the first Red Hat Summit. And at that time, Paul had all these in Massachusetts. Yeah, he didn't want to travel. He didn't want to travel. <laughs> Sorry about that, Paul. And today it is snowing in Boston, so I'm much happier that it's here today. Sam, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Sam Greenblatt with the VP, CTO of uh, Dell, CUBE alumni, uh, industry uh, luminary, tech athlete, as we say. Thanks for sharing your perspective. Congratulations on the Dell uh, announcement of Red Hat on the Thank co-engineering for OpenStack. Again, moving the needle, OpenStack becoming enterprise grade. That's what people want, and kind of that's what's happening. This is theCUBE, we're live in San Francisco at the Red Hat Summit. We'll be right back after this short break. Okay, thank you.